I'm Sammy Aaron. I'm the founder of The Resilient Activist, and I am here in the Kansas City area. And um, I want to introduce our guest today. Um, we have with us Leslie Scott, and she's the founder of Reuseful. Oh, we've got a couple more people to admit here. Um, Reuseful is a free site that encourages simple, sustainable living. It's in the Kansas City metro area. And they connect donors with gently used items to people, pets, and nonprofits that need them. So it's a pretty cool concept. Um, she's the founder of Reuseful and also Do More Good, which is a social enterprise that creates capacity building technology solutions that help people change the world. So what I wanna start with, those of you who came on a little bit later, I invite you to uh, go in the chat box and just put where you're from and one or two, a sentence or two about um, something you're interested in, something that brought you here today. And so I'm gonna start off with sharing my screen for a moment. And just begin with our indigenous native land acknowledgement. So I just like to acknowledge that this program created in the Kansas City area is on the ancestral lands of the Osage, the Kaw, the Kickapoo, and the Sioux Native American tribes. We honor our indigenous elders and know we have much to learn from them about how to live in deep connection with the natural world. We have some wonderful interviews on the Resilient Activists YouTube channel with Native Americans, Kelly Daniels from the Blue River Forest Experience and Dr. Daniel Wildcat from Haskell Indian Nations University. And you might wanna check those out. So I'm gonna stop share here and um, just kind of open it up to um, Leslie, do you have anything that you'd like to say at the beginning before we jump into the five essentials? Um, no. I just want to um, recognize a few of my advisory board members who are joining us here today. Oh, so Antonio, nice. Blake, and Becca, thank you for joining us. Um, they are um, great at all the help I need to uh, keep Reusable going and, um, and growing. So thank you to them. That's great. And I'm going to try and keep watching the um, uh, the participants to see if anybody else comes on the call. So forgive me if I'm a little distracted, but that's that's just how that goes. Um, I'm gonna start off with this year, another share screen. And um, wait a minute, there's somebody I need to let in here. And this is our homepage, the Resilient Activists homepage. And I would invite you to take a look at um, the section that says five essentials for a resilient world. So this is under the nurture earth section. And um, basically how these five essentials came about was I just had all these things I'd learned over the years about living in relationship to the environment. And so I just, um, kind of collated them down into general topics. And then each one of them can be used for a whole lot of different purposes. A lot of, um, a lot of things that you can interpret from them. So today we're just gonna go through some of them. Um, in the chat box. Okay, um, just to give you guys an overview, and then we're gonna open this up for conversation about each one of the topics. So the first one is reconnect to nature. And the concept of that is really to reevaluate your personal connection to the natural world. And this can be things like a spiritual connection, um, maybe even having um, an awe, a moment of awe. So a lot of people have that happen where they're in some setting out in nature and they have this experience that's just overwhelming, right? Overwhelmingly beautiful. When we have those experiences, we want more of them because they feel really good. And the more time that we spend in nature, the more time we spend 
understanding nature and learning about all the interconnectivity and, and the symbiosis that happens, the more we understand from a deeper level about our impact and the impact of the choices that we make. There's also a concept of being very mindful in nature. And um, I'll give an example of that later, but what that does is when you're in nature without your cell phones and chit chat and uh, lots of activity, you're just simply being in nature in that space, there's an opportunity to just clear out a bunch of busyness and a bunch of activity in your brain. The second one is respect all life. And we invite people to think about what communities are most impacted by climate change, by environmental destruction, and um, how they're impacted. So people that have been historically impacted are, of course, our indigenous relatives, families, but also those people in lower income neighborhoods, people that live in the urban core where there's a whole lot of cement, higher temperatures, and uh, lower air quality, people in agriculture. Um, a lot of farmers are really being impacted by severe weather events. Um, and so anything that we can do as a community to help support those communities that are less fortunate or less able to support themselves during these times can be really beneficial. Um, but also to think about the communities of non-humans. So wildlife, insects, plants, water, they're all living beings and to recognize our relationship with them. The third of the five essentials is to re-green our planet. This really talks about an understanding the cycle of life and how much we personally have altered. So if you take a look at just the footprint of your own personal home and how much of that is rooftop and cement and mowed grass where there is no living benefit, no benefit to any living beings, right? And then you multiply that by your neighborhood and you multiply that by your entire homes association and multiply that by your, your city and your county and your state and your country and the entire world. We humans have taken up a whole lot of what used to be um, native wildlife, wild plants that would help provide us with clean air, clean water, and all the food that we can eat. So we need to keep that cycle of life um, in the back of our minds as we think about what we can regreen on the planet. Revamp our spending is the next one. And that is a concept of, <clears throat> you know, the whole reuse, reuse, redu reduce, reuse, recycle. And then there's a whole bunch of other words, you know, re-gift, reimagine. Um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of R R E words that have come out of that with the concept of, do you even need to buy something? Do you even need to spend money? But also when you do spend money, having the awareness of that cradle to cradle concept. So if you're gonna buy a product, where did the raw materials for that come from? And how did that impact the land of people and the wildlife that lived in that area? And then you follow that mindset through the transportation of the raw materials and then the manufacturing and the turning of the raw materials into some product or some base product for whatever you're going to buy and all the water and electricity and fuel that's used to make that happen. And then following that through the actual manufacturing process and then the packaging that's used to package that product and then the shipping and the storage and the inventory and then that's before it even gets to you, right? And then what happens to it or how much uh, energy does it use or what kind of air quality does it impact or sound quality as you're using it. And then at some point it's at the end of its life cycle and now what? So the revamp our spending is the opportunity to just visualize that and be more mindful of the impacts of everything that you buy. And the final is replenish our resources. Um, we think about the word resources for one thing that many humans believe that the earth is their resource and planets are the resource. Plants and food and animals ground our resources. That empty land is just a resource waiting to be developed, 
right? So we rethink well, what does the word resource mean and how can we replenish those resources that we have taken and that we take every day, every time we drink water, every time that we, um, you know, do anything. We're, we're using something that was considered a resource. Um, there's a movement now called the Rights of Nature that gives um, legal benefit, legal rights to things like water and landscapes. And that's happening around the globe in a number of countries. So it's kind of an interesting concept. Um, in total, everything that we teach through the resilient activists, we teach through the lens of the five essentials. So how can you be more mindful of any one of these in any one action that you take. And of course, they're interconnected, right? The more that you regreen your backyard, for example, the closer you'll be able to reconnect to nature and the more you respect all life of the insects and birds and so on in your yard. And, you know, it, they all go together, but it's a way to kind of focus your thoughts and focus your awareness of um, what you're doing and how you're living your life. So, I am done with that. Are there any questions that anyone has about that before we go on? Okay, then I'm gonna turn this over for the next little bit to Leslie Scott and let her talk about Reuseful and how uh, the concept of what she's created fits in and complements the five essentials too. So take it, Leslie. All right. So um, thanks everybody for being here. And uh, I was um, getting a, a master's in, in nonprofit management and doing a lot of work in the community and kept having people ask me, you know, hey, I've got a, this, um, this bag of clothes or this toys that my kid, um, you know, doesn't play with anymore or it's box of books, um, I mean, you name it. Um, and uh, people just kept saying, like, do you know where I could take them? And um, oftentimes I did, you know, I had some go-to organizations that I would recommend like Operation Breakthrough and, and some other, um, you know, great organizations. But I really knew that I didn't know um, everyone who might could put those to good use. And, um, you know, I wanted to create something that um, would make it much more straightforward to know uh, what organizations were out there, what they needed, and then um, provide that um, information to uh, people who are looking to rehome those items. So, you know, it could range from, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm replacing my computer. So it could be one thing. It could be, um, you know, my, um, my, my father passed away and, um, you know, we have a whole house full of, um, of, of items that, you know, somebody could use to start over, you know, they're still in great shape but I just don't even know where to start um, to, uh, to rehome those things. So um, I started on a journey. It was about 10 years ago. Um, I can't believe it, but um, I, I had a lot of fits and starts. And uh, as a result of, of the pandemic, I, I thank the U.S. Congress for finally being able to launch this project because I used my uh, first stimulus check to pay a friend of mine um, to uh, create the site. So I was very fortunate and actually um, quick plug at four o'clock um, as part of the Earth Festival uh, that the Climate Council is, uh, is, is hosting. I'm going to talk about uh, this journey a bit um, and um, the, the volunteers who have helped me along the way. Um, 
actually uh, Antonio and, and Blake um, have, have both been on my project team. Um, Becca's on my marketing team in addition to being on the advisory board. So, um, you know, they've really helped me um, get this project off the ground. So um, I wanna thank their work and thank them for their work. And also, um, you know, I, I was gracious, uh, graciously uh, provided with um, design support as well, which um, really made all the difference because you know, it doesn't matter how functional it is, you know, if you go on a website and it, and it looks terrible, you know, you're likely to, to pop right off. So um, I thought maybe I would just go through the site really quickly. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I can't share my screen. Can you make can, I can now? Okay. All right. Wonderful. Um, okay. So um, I am going to do that really quickly and we will, that is not it, that is it. Okay, so um, this is uh, reusable, it's reusefulwith2ls.org and what I was able to do is um, get, we have I think 38 total charity partners right now and um, what they do is uh, if they want to sign up, I don't know if anybody knows any charity partners uh, potentially that um, they could refer, but it's free for everyone. So all they do is they fill out this, um, this form and it takes less than five minutes. And then what, once they do that, um, then they're going to be, um, and we'll, this is just a sample so that we can see some results. So um, they're going to indicate what kind of items they accept, whether or not they offer pickup service or only drop off, and then what kind of organization they are. And then a donor can come here and then indicate kind of their own uh, scenario that they have and mark what they um, have. And then um, we have a little map here and it shows there were 12 matching charities. I will click on Community Housing of Wyandotte County in honor of Becca. And um, so this is some information about CHWC, their mission and description. All of this was provided by um, the organization. And then you can see um, the list of items. So um, it's a way for you to kind of see um, how many of the items that you had searched for, um, you know, they, they might accept. Um, and so once you're, um, you decide on, um, on an organization and you can click contact. This is courtesy of Blake's work and send a message to the person's um, email who, that was, um, who was um, entered into the form when the organization um, signed up. So um, that's basically how the, um, the item matching works. If you'll notice over here, um, we tried to um, help people there's a, a thing in the nonprofit space, time, talent, and treasure. So we tried to offer um, ways for people to engage in all those aspects. And, um, you know, you may find an organization that maybe it's a little far for you to drive or, um, you know, maybe there's um, one organization that's going to take all your items. So you just want to take one stop. But, um, you know, you're really intrigued and impressed by um, some organization that you found on the site, and maybe you want to give them a little cash donation um, to support their work, or maybe you're thinking, oh, you know, that, that sounds like someplace that I'd really like to volunteer. And so there's a volunteer sign up as well. Um, and you can also, um, let's see, I always do that. Um, 
you can also, let's see if I can find one with, yeah, so like United Inner City Services, this is a um, Head Start Center. And um, they also have an Amazon wish list. So, um, you know, sometimes there are things that just have to be new, um, you know, whether that's for um, hygiene sake or, or, you know, you don't want to donate a uh, half used box of crayons or something like that for a school supply drive. You want kids to have those brand new crayons like um, you know all the other kids have. So there may be items that um, the organization has on their Amazon wish list. And for instance, um, these are the things that they have. Um, some of the cool stuff that they have on their Amazon wish list here um, for their art program. So um, that is basically how the site works. And um, it's, again, it's free for everybody to use. And we'd love to have um, you tell your friends about it and um, also tell anyone who um, you know, works at a nonprofit that we have this free resource and um, you know, to check it out because we'd love to have them as a charity partner. Leslie, I have a question about the donors. Who are your donors? Is it just the general public or do you have other groups of donors? Yeah, so it's just the general public. These, um, you know, it's anybody who, who wants to use the site can. Um, we have uh, from, from our own, um, you know, financial support, uh, most of it has been um, bootstrapped um, by me, um, but we um, do have um, in-kind support from um, Hypercubed. They did a ton of work um, for the, um, what I would call the engine of the site um, that really creates the ability for, for people to go through that matching process. Um, and um, Junk Luggers, which is a, um, a franchise. They are actually located in, in Lawrence, but um, they serve the Casey Metro area. And, um, you know, they have, a, 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 I mean, I, I, th I think that they're, you know, interested in, in lowering um, the environmental impact of, of throwing away things. Um, but it's also, you know, the, the less that they haul to the to the landfill, the less they have to pay. So they're a little self-interested in, um, in finding a home for, for some things that are still in, in good shape. So um, they're also one of our sponsors and we have, um, we've done some, um, some uh, crowdfunding and, and that sort of thing, but we're still kind of early in our, <laughs> in our fundraising journey. <laughs> But but as I know far that feeling. as yeah right, um, but as far as um, you know the, the what we call donors are are those people who are um, visiting the site um, with the intent of of trying to to rehome an, an item or more um, that that they know is is still in good enough shape to to help somebody out and you know right now um, the. There are people who um, are, are really going through a lot of rough times, and um, if there's anybody today going through that, um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm really uh, sorry that that it's happening. Um, it's you know, people who have never experienced hardship before are are, are going through it now, and um, so uh, you know. I don't know in, in recent memory that um, the need has any, been any greater um, because, you know, just lots of, of folks who are um, ha having a lot of hardship. So, yeah. um, you know, while it was great timing um, for us to launch because of that, um, you know, I, I definitely trade it um, for uh, people to 
be able to avoid going through what they're going through. Cool. Well, that's pretty exciting. Does anyone have any questions they want to ask Leslie? Anything else that she didn't mention that you want to know about? Kind of unmute yourself if you have anything you want to say or add or ask. I, I have a question for uh, Brianna. Brianna, how did you hear about Reuseful? You put that in the chat, so I'm just curious. You know, I forgot. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I believe a, a coworker of mine, um, she's recently got into uh, this minimalism project of her own at home. And so she was doing the project of uh, every day, like you get rid of one thing, it was like a month long challenge. And then the next day you get rid of two things and then three and so on. And she really didn't want to just toss her stuff in the trash or anything. And so she found you and I'm, and she told me about it. And I was like, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's do this. It was really exciting. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I'm really grateful for people like you. Um, and I'm, I'm, I want to bring my, um, my friend, Lisa, um, off mute, um, because, uh, she has <laughs> furnished, uh, my, my new house that I moved into a couple weeks ago with, uh, literally a bed, a chest of drawers and a dresser. <laughs> and that was it. And four dogs. Um, <laughs> and so, um, I just, I, I want to kind of, um, have her talk more about, that um, and her method, she said, um, you know, thrifting is her superpower. So Lisa, you want to talk about that? Oh. Hi, everyone. Um, sure. Leslie, thanks for inviting me. And I wish I could claim that it was through some environmental awareness. There's, there's a thread of that running through me, but I think I'm really messy at my um, ability to um, move in a way that um, doesn't harm the planet or just uses it but it, it there is definitely an awareness in me and it, and it maybe got fostered about 15 years ago when my kids were coming up in school and you know there's all sorts of things that you always need um, or that you think that you need um, and I kept thinking I really don't want to be a first market consumer. So I'm, I'm, there's plenty, we've made so many things and there's so many things out there um, that I'm pretty sure I can find whatever that thing is that I'm wanting or needing um, in the second market or as someone's cast off. And because I'm also creative, um, if it doesn't appear to be desirable at the moment with a little bit of effort, I can bring it back to life and give it a second go round uh, in my own life. So, um, so I started doing the thrifting with my kids and, you know, they developed their own style uh, with the thrifting. It had its own benefits, but then when Leslie moved into this house, the first thing I said was like my strategy when I have a need like that is just to go to the various um, apps that I use. So like I use Facebook marketplace and offer up, those are my two primary uh, things I look at for free items. And my first search is free. So, you know, the first thing she needed, she didn't have a sofa. Um, she didn't have end tables. Um, she didn't have, we needed to furnish like the downstairs, which she was so gracious to offer us because we were going through, a, we were displaced by a fire recently. So um, in order to set that whole room up so that it was hospitable space, um, it needed everything. It was an empty space and needed everything and literally didn't want to spend money um, to set it up if, if it was possible to, to do it with uh, repurposed items. So it was amazing to me how many great things I was able to find for free. Sometimes the trade-off was you know, the first thing, chest of drawers, you know, the trade-off was we went to pick it up from a house in Leewood, a really nice nine drawer, chest of drawers for free. Um, but she was an older 
a grandmother who was now taking care of her grandchildren. I don't know that story, but it may, it may also flow from a hardship, Leslie, because it was clear that the grandchildren being full-time in her home was new. And she was rearranging what was a traditional guest room so that her grandson, who was about six, seven years old, could use it uh, both to study and to play. And it wasn't a play space before. So out with the chest of drawers and in with a desk, a student desk for the grandchild. So uh, my partner and I, Quinn, picked up the chest of drawers, popped it in our car, and then took the desk, the student desk, which was in her garage, and she wasn't able to carry up those stairs to that room and carried it up for her. So there was a little bit of a trade there. Um, in another case, one really, really cool, uh, very uh, artisan sort of piece downstairs, uh, all metal welding, uh, we found, and it was in a in the basement of a townhome where they were painting and reusing the space. Now here, another story, her mother was living in that basement. So she was repurposing that basement space for her mother. And this, this piece didn't serve her purposes at all, but it was so heavy, neither one of them would have been able to lift it out. It, I, I'm not exaggerating, cost 300 pounds, probably was 300 pounds. And it took a lot of heft for all of us to get it up the hill and into our car, but we managed to do it. So I guess the bottom line is, um, I think with a good eye and and a and a and a commitment to do so, there's just so many things that you can find that people are done with. Um, and Leslie, I love that your site helps them to connect to, um, because sometimes if they don't get picked up by me, they're on the curb. You know, if they don't get picked up by me, now they're large item pickup pieces and they do go to the landfill. And I do think um, it, it's my superpower to find great things that are for free, but I need to work on um, how that connects with one of your principles um, because it's a really about um, not assuming that things come from nowhere and that they go nowhere when you're done with them, you know. Um, and also trying to make use of what's already been made and stop creating the need to keep making more and more things. That's amazing, Lisa. Yeah, I think you touched on a whole bunch of the five essentials. <laughs> and for you two to connect, that's that's really great. Kudos to you. Yeah, Leslie yeah. and I connected about, oh, what, 10 years ago? I mean, really, almost after I moved to Kansas City in 2011, I met you very yeah. shortly after. Yeah. 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 It, it had to be about then. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting in a chair at a desk, courtesy of Lisa. <laughs> All and, and my little dog is behind me on a, on a futon that, uh, she bought, uh, or she, she picked up, um, purposefully for, such purpose because she knew that they would want to be in the office with me. So, um, you know, uh, she also picked up a, a full size mattress for, for my giant dog um, that he loves. So, you know, even things like, you know, dog beds, um, you know, your those things that are called dog beds, like maybe something else might, might work just as well. Um, and, and so just thinking about, you know, your own, um, behaviors and your own, um, you know, what other living things in your, uh, house with you <laughs> need, right. um, you know, you can, you can find, find things that maybe aren't called what you are going to use them for, but, um, you know, they, they end up serving that purpose. So, um, right. It's, this is great. Yeah, it's just made like I mean, yeah. it was a total empty house, <laughs> and she's just she's cool. made it a home. Cool, cool. Well, I just now posted in the chat box the link to Enviro Tip Number Eleven, a home checklist. I'm going to share my screen again, and we have a number of Enviro Tips on the website about all different kinds of topics relating to the environment relating to the five essentials. This was when we had a fundraiser at my house back when we were doing those kinds of things. So August of 2019. And um, 
I just had gone through my home and kind of put a sign on everything that was an intentional change that I had made into how I was living or a choice that I'd made. And it turned into um, these checklists, which, um, hold on, get these over here. Um, there are two of them, they're similar, Let me go clear to the top. And these are accessible for you guys on, on the, uh, on the site there, uh, just on the page, there's buttons. But um, this is just kind of the story of me and my husband and what we've done. And it turned out they had over a hundred simple things that I had done. So this one, um, they're, they're similar. This one is a little bit easier to print, whereas this other one is way more beautiful. So you pick which one you want. Uh, they're both checklists, and this one that's really pretty is editable. So it's a PDF document, and there's some instructions there. But if you actually save it on your computer and then open it in Adobe, rather than opening it in a browser, or even you can't do this on your, um, on your mobile device, but you go through and you read the, the idea. So for example, include at least one house plant picture or object from nature in every room. And then you go in the box next to it and you put a number. So three is I do this frequently. Two, I do this occasionally. One, I barely or rarely do this. Zero, I never do this. And question mark is, well, I never even thought about it, right? So you can go through this whole document and it's got sections for, um, there's a bunch of internet resources and local resources in Kansas City some resilience tools um, having to do with um, the outdoors, having to do with, there's a lot on the outdoors, that's my kind of thing, with your bedrooms, with your bathrooms, just all these different things you can check off. I do wanna show you this. A couple of people have, in the chat box had mentioned about their sustainable yards. This was the first year, so that was August of 2019 that we decided to rewild our backyard. And what I did was not follow any of the recommended advice. So I didn't wanna kill anything that was out there. I just wanted to start replacing what was there with natives. So the couple things in bloom, this is a swamp milkweed. Um, this looks like, uh, forget what that is. This is a, um, the sunflower in the back here. And we just edged part of the yard with some logs that a friend had just cut down a bunch of um, trees on her property to put in some natives. These were non-native uh, trees that was Osage orange. And she just happened to have these logs laying around. The day I called and said, do you happen to have anything I could use for a border? She brought it over, she and her husband that day, and we had this perfect border. So I want to share with you um, kind of what it looks like today. And um, oh, wrong screen here. So this is the edge. The house is over here on the left. This is all, the yard part is all clover, so it's a little taller. We will mow about two strips along the edge so that we can get in there. But this is all the natives. So that's, this is this week. So this is uh, actually white violets that are blooming. Where's my, where's my arrow here? Somewhere I should have an arrow, it's not happening. All right, we'll just try this again. Um, so just to give you a sense for what this can look like, this is all mostly violets. There's a couple of dandelions. There's some um, uh, barren strawberry that's starting to show up in here. And, um, and then this is what it looks like with the full garden. Okay, and so we'll make little berms of the He'll mow around some of the bigger patches of clover and we'll just have mowed so that it's a nice clean area to walk in. So this whole, all this system, you guys can download these and answer all kinds of questions for yourself about what you might want to do next or just a way to think about um, how you can kind of go to your next step in being a little more environmental in your home, okay? So any questions about that? 
All right. I just I would, a quick, quick go ahead. Sammy, yeah. and when I, I moved into my house, I had never seen wild violets before. Mm -hmm. And I would say about two thirds of my backyard is wild violets. And it's just, I love looking at it. I, I'm going to be so sad at the end of June when they start to fade away, but um, it's just, it's the best. And I want, I, I'm just so excited that they're here because now I have this um, new goal to have one big giant backyard full of wild violets. Cool. And so thinking in terms of that cycle of life piece, so the native violets are the host plant for the royal fritterelli, which I don't say properly, butterfly. And being a host plant means if you don't have that plant in your yard, that butterfly has nowhere to lay its eggs because the caterpillar only eats that plant or requires that particular plant. So in addition to that, if you like having birds in your yard, birds like the uh, uh, black cap chickadee for one clutch of eggs, meaning they lay four to six eggs in one nest, right? They require four to 6,000 caterpillars to feed that one clutch of birds. So if you want to have the caterpillars to feed the birds, to feed their baby birds, you need to have the appropriate plants in your yard that are chemical free, that'll help you do that, that'll help that bird population. So it's all related, so that's exciting. Yeah. All right, anybody else with any questions, comments? Okay, what I'd like to do is talk about um, reconnecting to nature and so go kind of going through the five essentials again and how you might do that or how you have done that or questions that you have about it. And so, for example, my personal story is going through a really deep period of grief in my life. Nature was my savior. Nature was where I had to get to. And I experienced so many metaphors in nature and just that sense of well-being in a natural place is really, really of great value to me. So I just want to open it up. Does anybody else have anything that they've experienced that they would say they really connected to nature or have some questions about how they could? Feel free to just unmute yourself. Yeah, think about it. Has anybody had a moment of awe in nature? I go to the walking trails around Unity Village. Mm -hmm. all, all this, like if I can, if I'm having a stressful day, I just, it, it's replenishing and it's a really beautiful, easy trail. I don't know if anyone's walked those trails before, but Unity Village just brings peace. And if I meditate, if I don't have time to go outside, I, I try to meditate and I just place myself there in my mind with the sounds and the colors and the smells and everything like that. That's great, Brianna. So when you are in meditation and you are in a really quiet space and you bring back to mind the memory of being in a place like that, the same areas of your brain will light up as would have lit up when you were actually in that place. So when you reimagine the smells and you reimagine the scents and the sounds and the, uh, the, the temperature and the humidity, you are re-experiencing it. So good for you. Thank you. That's really cool. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, um, I'm, I'm trying to make a practice of um, being in awe and remembering to um, be aware kind of at a, whatever that sort of level where you can be aware of awe um, in daily life. I, I, I live out in the country and have some property and I, I've started calling it my laboratory to be able to go outside and, and daily. And, but I, it doesn't, you know, it can be anywhere, but, um, but being aware of what is awe-inspiring in nature 
and especially with lights and the the spring colors and the you know just there's there's just so much that's really truly amazing and then to remember to to feel that in my body to consciously feel awe okay, which you were talking about but i know it it it, it uh, rewires or creates new pathways um if in your um your neurons and um so it's you know it is it's just a, a practice that i that's really wonderful it's really fun there's a lot to it it's easy to do it's just slowing down enough but, so. yeah yeah and and some of that remembering to to find the awe those moments of inspiration even if all you do is look at one plant and really look at it notice its shape its form its color its pattern how tall it is in comparison to other plants and if there's an aroma and what the texture is of its petals or its step its stalk or its leaves and just taking a, a full minute of really connecting with even one plant can bring a lot of that benefit back to you. Yeah, I was going to say I have um, like last year when we were all starting to be really tired of being stuck inside and at the same time, like the weather was really nice. Um, I started going outside and just taking my camera with me and um, trying to really focus in, like you said, focus in on plants that I had never noticed before and like mm -hmm. noticing what they looked like. And um, I started seeing the same plants, you know, all the time now that I started paying attention to what they look like. And then I would go back through my photos later and try to identify them. And it was really cool because then I, you know, I'd be walking around later and be like, oh, I, I remember what that is. Um, and so for me, that was a really like, I feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in the world. And, and sometimes my approach is to just try to insulate myself from it instead of like affirmatively reconnecting with the good parts of the world. And um, it was like a really cool experience for me to do that. So starting to do it again this year now that it's finally finally feels hospitable to be outside. That's great insight, Rebecca. And, and it's really kind of the resilient activist philosophy. There is a whole lot of negative stuff out there. And yeah, we need to know about a lot of it. But in the meantime, what's blooming today, right? Because that's with the breath. What's in bloom today, right? Or what, what little critter did you just see flying by because you know you put in habitat that helps benefit that critter? So the more that we can focus on what we can do and what we can notice, the happier, healthier, and more resilient we'll all be. So thank you for that. I want to switch to um, replenish our resources because that's one that um, I have kind of a hefty affinity for. And I want to talk especially about water. Those of us who live in an urban setting, suburban setting with clean water and unlimited amounts of clean water, as long as we have the money to pay for it, right? We just don't always think about where that comes from and how much we could um, replenish, how much water we let go down our drain. So there's simple things, you know, turn the water off when, when you're washing your hands, right? Wet them, get your soap on, shut the water off, do your 20 seconds or your alphabet twice or whatever you're still doing these days and then turn the water back on and, and rinse. You know, when you're brushing your teeth, turn the water off. But there's also things like you have people over for dinner and you all have a glass of water half full sitting on the table, right? Instead of throwing that down the drain, I put it in my watering cans so that I will use those to water my house plants or when I have potted plants outdoors or even walk outside and water a plant with them. When you have um, when you have any kind of leftover water to think about where it comes from and think about if you're wasting it. So if you're washing dishes, fill up a small tub or the small side of the sink with a stopper and soap, wash your dishes in there. And then you can just have the water run on a low the volume to rinse so you don't have the water running the whole time. If you, um, I had another example, which was water. 
I can't think of what it was right now. It was really important. It was great information. I just want to say that. And I'm sure it's going to come to me soon. But the point is to think about what you're doing. If you're washing vegetables, for example, potatoes that you're going to then bake, well, capture that water because that's great to water your plants back with. It's just dirt, right? Or the vegetables you bring home from the farmer's market or from your backyard. So you just begin to be mindful, right? which is part of what we teach being mindful with what you do with your water, what you do with, with everything that you touch. So does anybody have any other things that they do or that they've thought about and haven't figured out how to not waste or how they could reuse something or um, replenish something that uh, normally most people, or that most people would throw away? Brenda, you've unmuted. Yeah, um, I find that I have a habit now um, when the water's running um, that I can visualize places around the world that don't have water. Um, I can see um, people trudging across a dried, cracked landscape. Um, and I, I guess it's because I've read so much and seen so much and listened to so much and those images just pop in my head just like whenever I go to the store and they put my things into a plastic bag, I see that in the gut of an animal, you know? So um, it's, it's a little depressing, but at the same time, it's motivating um, to, to sort of keep those images and to use them to reshape my own behavior. So, so is it easy or difficult to reshape your own behavior? It's been helpful. It's been helpful. Because you care, because, because you understand because those why images it are because those images are there and they sort of automatically yeah. spring up now in those situations. So yeah, yeah. yeah. helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Lynn? No. Nope. Oh, Lynn, you're muted again. Okay. Here you go. Okay. There you go. I, I would say okay. it's, it's difficult. Because when you want to uh, turn off the shower, when you're just try, you know, when you're uh, soaping up and you don't need to have it on, that's not as nice. It doesn't feel as good and when it's cold, especially. And I'm try I had another one in mind and it slipped too. But capturing that water when we, ours runs like I'd probably use two gallons before I can get it warm enough for me to take a shower. And so I'm wasting. And that's where I put my watering cans underneath there. I have yeah. two great big ones and, and I capture that mean. water. That's what I mean. It's yeah. difficult though. That's, it takes effort to do that. Yeah, extra effort. It does. And yeah, and so when you look at the, the checklist and you're going, what you're kind of grading the different things. So the shower, for example, maybe that's something you're not going to do right now. You know, for whatever reason, you really like that shower. You like, you, you, that's not a comfortable activist step, step for you to take right now. But you know what, there's 99 other steps on that sheet that you can choose. I'm not going to do that one. That's something that, that I'm not ready to give up or I'm not ready to change or I don't know how to change. But you can go get, you know, the, uh, the shower heads that I forget what they're called, but they, um, they use less water. Low flow. You know, low, low flow. Thank you. The low flow. So there's, there's still things you can do. You can have your cake and you can have your shower and take it too. <laughs> So we are about out of time. I hate to say this, this one hour was just really fast. Leslie, I would invite you to, first I want to thank you for being with us. Yeah. Anything that you, you've got some upcoming things you want to announce? Yeah, I put it in uh, the chat, but I will um, I'll put it in there again. So on, um, if, if you're, Thinking spring cleaning and uh, decluttering, we have an event on uh, Earth Day, Thursday, 10 a.m. It's free, and we have a professional organizer from Simplicana who's going to join us, talk about the difference between decluttering and organizing, and then um, you've already kind of uh, seen my spiel, but, um, you know, you'll get to hear it again or... <laughs> 
you can go do something else and uh, you know come back for Q and A if if you'd like at the end. But um, I think that you know those little tips um, are sometimes I know I just don't know um, where to start. You know, and if you do, it's kind of like that um, law of physics. You know, a body in motion stays in motion. I just kind of have to start somewhere and then you can get the momentum going. So we just invite everybody um, to do that. Um, and I, I really appreciate everybody who's who's been here today. Um, you know, thank you to, to Sammy for inviting me um, to, to be here. And I really, um, I love the work that you're doing. And I think, you know, um, I'm, I'm kind of going to um, maybe I don't know, Becca, don't get mad at me. But, um, you know, I, I know people like Rebecca who who think about, um, you know, their own behavior and in, in the world and, and it can get a little overwhelming. And I know that she's not alone. I'll, you know, many of us feel that way. So um, thank you for the work you're doing, Sammy. Um, and, um, you know, just a reminder that, um, you know, the Resilient Activist is a, a nonprofit organization. So if you appreciated the information that, um, that Sammy provided today and the work she does, um, I know that, that there's a, a link, I'm sure, on your website to, to support. Yeah, donate button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so look for that donate button. Um, if you think that reusable might be something that um, would be helpful for you, um, we are uh, fiscally um, sponsored, which means we can offer um, tax deductible donations to um, people who um, feel compelled to, to support us as well. And um, uh, so we would invite you to um, visit our site too. And um, if you feel so um, inclined to support us, we would really appreciate it. Uh, if you know a business who, um, you know, really has uh, sustainability as one of their values, um, you know, uh, sponsorship uh, for the website um, would, would be really helpful. Um, we have a very small budget um, currently, so every little bit helps, and I'm, I'm sure that's the case um, for the resilient activist as well. So, um, if you appreciate our work and feel like you want to support us, we would be very grateful. Leslie, thanks so much for being here. Um, I do want to say first, this is being recorded, so it'll take a couple days, but we'll have this recording up on our YouTube channel and we'll send an email out at that time. I'll include all the links that were in the chat today. And um, so by virtue of signing up for this, you will be added to both of our mailing lists. So feel free if it's something you don't want to subscribe to in the future, just feel free to click on unsubscribe with your newsletters. I do want to mention that next Saturday, the 24th from nine to one, we are having a deep nature connection. It's in conjunction with um, Tracy Ochester from the Midwest Alliance for Mindfulness. And it's a, a four hour workshop retreat called Interwoven, and it's going to be that deep nature connection. And so I just invite you to, to um, come be out in nature. There is an opportunity to do it online if you prefer, but so far everyone who's registered wants to be in person. So we will be masked, we will be socially distanced, um, and we, there is, there's indoor facilities where we can do all that. So um, I just invite you for Earth Month to really consider getting connected in um, that's it. I'm really grateful you're all here. And if anybody else has anything, suggestions, ideas, questions that you didn't get asked, if you didn't answer today, um, feel free to shoot an email to, you know, just go to our contact page and, and shoot us an email. So Leslie, thank you. Best of luck with your, your new organization. It's pretty exciting. Thank you so much, Sammy. Bye-bye.